Thanks for calling MSU Denver IT Service Desk. This is Dominic, how can I help? That was my catchphrase for the past few years while I've been working as a student employee in the call center in IT services. I'd like to share with you some of the calls that I had at the start of the pandemic and throughout. It was the first week I had my desk at home set up with work on one side and school on the other. I clock into work. Thanks for calling IT services, how can I help? Hi, I'd like to request a loaner laptop. I usually use the computer labs on campus, but since campus is closing, I'll need a way to get online since I don't have a computer at home. No problem. I just sent you an email, book an appointment at your earliest convenience, and come and pick one up. So things are looking great at the start of the pandemic. I'm able to help people from home, continue work from home, and continue my education from home. A few weeks since the pandemic, Thanks for calling IT services, how can I help? Hi, I don't know if you'll be able to help me with this. I recently got a Chromebook, and I'm trying to take an exam, but some of the questions aren't loading correctly, so I can't answer the question. I understand. You mentioned that you had a Chromebook. Yes, it was the only thing that's available. I really wanted to get a PC or a Mac, though. I see. So unfortunately, Chromebooks aren't fully compatible with the exam website. Do you have access to a Mac or PC? No, I don't. <laughs> no worries. I can put you on a wait list for a laptop, but it could be up to two weeks until we get back to you. So things are starting to change a little bit. Resources aren't as immediately available, and cracks in our supply chain system are starting to show. A few weeks after that, thanks for calling IT services. How can I help? Hi. I've been taking classes on my phone, and I recently heard that loaner laptops aren't immediately available. However, I'd still like to be put on the wait list because I need to participate easier in class. It's difficult to use my phone. No worries, I'll put you on that wait list. Hopefully, we'll get you that laptop soon, but it could be up to a three-week wait. At the height of the pandemic, this is what we were experiencing. My instructor assigned us our final project. She wanted us to go out and find a competition or design challenge that seeks to solve the prob those problems that we're experiencing today. I found a competition that asked, how can people of any age access quality education from anywhere? This made me think of my entire time as a student. I was born in the 90s, so I grew up with the integration of technology and internet into education. I also grew up in Kenya, where 10 years ago, I witnessed, and even I as a teenager, would actually sacrifice food and clothing for airtime or phone credit to access the internet. 10 years ago at that same time, Steve Jobs was announcing a new third category of device, one that merges the world of the smartphone and the laptop into one. This was the iPad. I thought it would one day replace the laptop. Ten years later today, the iPad still hasn't replaced the laptop, and Kenya has a robust mobile internet system with nearly 60 million internet users. Kenya's population is also near 60 million people. This made me think, during the height of the pandemic, I have to do something about this. So I set out on a mission. I want to provide universal access to personal computing. To do this, I started with the design phases of sketching, prototyping, testing, user feedback, and many, many hours of iteration and 3D printing. During that process, I figured out that I would need to change design methods and manufacturing. Currently, a lot of our electronics are produced in a way that's cradle to grave, meaning we take from our earth, we make our stuff, and then we waste it. For example, each year as new phones come out, last year's model becomes less useful. A better way that we can manufacture electronics is using a cradle to cradle design method. This means mimicking, mimicking what you see in nature. For example, rain. Water condensates, precipitates, and evaporates in a loop forever. Nothing we manufacture today can really do this. 
So I knew that in order to achieve my mission of universally accessible personal computing, I needed to change our traditions in manufacturing and design. I also knew that I needed to do three things. Make something that's affordable. A computer device that's less than $100. Make something that's usable. Something that's easy to use and intuitive. And make something that's compatible. Something that will have a long life. A product that can be upgraded and repaired. So, I came up with a solution. And I call it the phone book. Phone book is a 3D printed smartphone accessory that turns your smartphone into a laptop. It's easy to use and effortless to set up. Once you plug in your phone, the laptop experience begins. The computing power on the phone book is provided by Samsung DeX. Samsung DeX is an Android system, and although a part of Google's ecosystem, it is not a Chromebook. Using the phone book, you're able to access the world's computing power through your smartphone's wireless connection. For example, you could use it to access your online learning environment, like Canvas or Blackboard. You can also use it to access computers that require, or, sorry, applications that require more computing power. For example, computer-aided modeling programs like SolidWorks or Rhino. You can even use it to connect to digitally creative apps like Adobe Photoshop, InDesign, or even Premiere Pro. Being able to use your smartphone's wireless connection is critical in order to provide that universal access to personal computing. Phonebook has a total manufacturing cost of $40. How is this achieved? Inside of the Phonebook, there's only a few components. There's an LCD screen, a control board, a keyboard, and a few cables. Those components, components add up to being around $35, leaving $5 for the plastic shell and body construction. 3D print manufacturing has the potential to provide further benefits over injection molded plastic. 3D printing is a more holistic approach to support cradle to cradle design methods. By 3D printing, we can produce locally. Making production local eliminates the need for shipping. But that's not the only benefit. If production is local, we can introduce programs, or my idea, is to upcycle old laptops. Most laptop screens, unless broken, are pretty usable and have an application in the phone book. If we can upcycle these old components, there might be some issues. For example, the mounting location for the LCD could be in a different spot for each model. With 3D printing, though, that's not a problem. You're able to customize each print to fit each component. This is not possible with injection molding. Another benefit with 3D printing and having it local is you can empower communities that might not have had access to 3D printing. This 3D printer I purchased during the pandemic to make my prototype. I have an idea that 3D print farms would be able to produce the phone book. In this design here within the printer, I designed it so that the print, the prints of the phone book can be done in two pieces. This allows the design to be made on smaller printers. This was done because in Kenya, there is a 3D print farm, which is usually just a big room with a lot of 3D printers inside of them. And they would not be able to make the phone book because their printers were too small. Using 3D print technology, not only are we able to locally manufacture, 3D printing can also educate people, giving people the power, empowering people with the tools to create solutions for their immediate surroundings. I envision that if a community, like a school community, was able to purchase a few 3D printers, at the end of one week, with a print time of 15 hours per device, they would be able to produce 20, 15 to 20 
computers for their student body. This means that people will have access to technology that they didn't have before, and all at a low cost. It does require that you have a Samsung phone, but the use of USB is important. USB is a standardized design, and standardized designs allow access to a greater range of people. Proprietary connections, such as those found on the Apple iPhone and Lightning, limits the range of people that can access that technology. So in designing the phone book, the use of USB means that you can continuously upgrade with future USB generations. You might need to use a dongle. However, if you get a new phone, you can also continue to use the phone book. In the future, there could even be wireless technology to power this. So I wanted to provide universal access to personal computing. To do that, I knew I needed that low price, which was achieved. But the biggest finding was the ability for the phone to replace the laptop. This supports holistic design and cradle-to-cradle -cradle methods. By eliminating the need to manufacture laptops, we'll be able to reduce our harm to the environment, and in doing so, we'll be able to create a better post-pandemic future, one that is sustainable, where we've mastered sustainable design practices. Thank you. <laughs>